quiet. The room is not filled. We are waiting. And we are on a journey. On this night, plans have been made for months to gather together, light candles, to sing carols, to just enjoy the promise of Christmas. But this year, we can't come together. Something called COVID. Something called state's orders. So, it's quiet. Not 200, not 300, not even 500 people, oh my goodness, 
Did the fire marshal have difficulty with that? Just us. Us gathering together. You in your living room. Your den. Your television center. Us here in this beautifully silent chapel, ready to come together for the 42nd annual Carols by Candlelight Jamboree and get together. Thank you for inviting us into your home. Thank you for coming into this place. We're looking forward to hearing tonight from Isaac Paxman and Kenneth Joe Matthews. Looking forward to breaking the silence of this marvelous day with the voices of the Provo Interfaith Choir. Special treat tonight is we get to hear the ministry and music of a marvelous cellist. I'm looking forward for you to hear what some of us has already heard. And besides that, her parents live in Texas, my home state, like old homes. Indeed, for 42 years, this Sunday has felt like old home from the very beginning Paxman home, to hear at Provo Community Congregation United Church of Christ. Met here for a couple reasons. One, we could light candles here. Couldn't do that a lot of other church sanctuaries. And two, we had just enough space for the community to gather. Oh, thank you for joining us. And thank you for this marvelous time. Now, it's time to break that silence. You might remember that God broke that silence when God sent the angels to sing to the shepherds. You might remember that God broke that silence when God put that star up there and those wise men from the east saw it and said, Let's go investigate. Well, I think it's high time to break that silence here. So I suggest that you join us if you choose to, because we have an invitation. And that invitation is, oh, come, all ye faithful. Won't you come?
came, we come with faithfulness. We come remembering and anticipating. We come to hear again the story. Come to be convinced again of the story. And we come to become the story of your love, your grace. Or in a time of darkness, hopelessness, and despair, there is no story better. There is no behavior better than your grace, your mercy, and your compassion as we wear it gladly. And having been blessed, we become the blessing. Oh, Lord, open the windows of heaven and pour out upon us such blessing that we will not be able to contain it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, Lord, before we say so, be it. We, ponder, we are pondering a question this night. When he comes, as you pour out that blessing, will we recognize? Will we recognize the blessing? So, Lord, now we open our hearts, our souls, our minds, and our strength to let you intertwine with us you have promised that you have written on our hearts that of you which we would wish to know. And so, open our eyes, open our ears. In the name of the Christ child that we have privileged to pray. Amen.
here because my grandparents 42 years ago started this Carols by Candlelight. So thankful to everyone who's kept it alive. Love this church, I love this choir, love Reverend Couples. It's a privilege to be here. Picture with me, if you will, for just a moment, an ordinary candle in an otherwise unlit room. Can you see the flicker of the light against the wall? Can you picture a face near the candle glowing against the darker background? Next to modern day lighting, a candle doesn't hold a candle. Modern day lighting is brighter. It's more reliable, safer. We could probably go on and on. But one of the things I love about Christmas is that it seems to help us appreciate and focus on simple, humble things like a candle or a shepherd. It's that ability of Christmas to turn our world upside down that I wanted to talk about tonight. As a young boy, I was out caroling with my family, and my mom suggested that we go sing to the Joneses. I've changed the name. I felt fear in my heart because I knew a little bit of the backstory. A couple doors down from us, there was a house that was uh, a rental, and people would park their cars on the grass all the time, and this bothered my parents enough to where they finally lodged a complaint. Well, it turned out the landlords were the Joneses, also in our neighborhood. And so there was tension. It was uncomfortable. And here was my mom suggesting that we go sing to the Joneses. I remember the fear, but I remember more feeling of joy as they opened their door and my mom presented the lovingly made baked goods to them and they hugged and the world was turned upside down in a glorious way. I was reminded that as I teared up reading our story earlier this week in World War II, a family was in Iran, they were missionaries. The dad had to stay back but the mother and daughter were able to leave on a warship. Two months of travel at sea, swerving every once in a while to avoid being detected by submarines. It was Christmas Eve. There were only 25 women. It was otherwise soldiers and German prisoners of war, 500 prisoners of war, who would swab the decks and work. And someone had the idea, let's go ask the captain, would he allow us to sing to the German prisoners of war? Permission was granted. And there was a hush and hearts were pounding as these 25 women and children approached the quarters of the German prisoners of war. And they decided to start with Silent Night since the German, Germans would know the song. And she described unashamed tears flowing down their eyes as they all rushed towards the windows and looked out at them and felt the joy of Christmas for a moment. The world was turned upside down. Throughout the year, words like success seem to have a hold on us. But through the eyes of the Christmas spirit, success is a word that rings hollow. Our hearts yearn instead for words like joy, giving, home. And I want to conclude by sharing one more way that Christmas, or at least Christianity, seems to convert things and turn them upside down. Because our Savior has said that if we want to give a gift to Him, Yes, there are lots of things we do to try to draw close to him. We should do. We pray. We worship. We must do those things. But if he says if you want to give a gift to him, give a gift to the least of those among you. Who could be the least? Is it a child? A struggling teenager? A sin-bound soul? A beggar? Whatever it is, we can ask, is this mere poetry? A nice sentiment? I, for one, don't think it's just a nice sentiment in poetry for my Savior. No, from this omniscient Lord who descended below all things and bore all humanity's sorrows and sins and burdens. No, two hearts, I'm convinced at least, are lifted when we lift one of the least among us, the individual and the Savior. May we revel in the upside down world that we get to live in through Christmas time is my prayer. And I share it in the holy name of Jesus Christ, who is alive, who loves each of us, and who desires to redeem every one of us with a redeeming love and power that I know is real. 
for it has touched my soul. Amen. Did you hear the cello? Woo! Thank you. Great privilege is ours. This church, Provo Community Congregation, Union Line Church of Christ, has a poet laureate. That's poet, not poet. Poet laureate. His name is Brent. No, Brent. Poet. Brent has our yearly. Carols by candlelight poem presentation. Brett, speak to us of glory and eternity. This is called Finding the Light. It's December once more. Another year's passed. And oh, what a year it has been. 2020's had drama that's been pretty vast. We won't want to go through it again. But Christmas still comes, in good years and bad. I'm so very grateful that's true. Though the year has been tough, what memories we've had. 
and we've got plenty more to go through. We remember the Lord at this time of year and the glorious tale of his birth. The service he gave to the world we hold dear as we ponder its infinite worth. Christmas is such a glorious season when we honor the life of our Lord. This year I found another good reason to rejoice that cannot be ignored. As I stop to examine the last year gone by, I think about all I have learned. Thoughts run through my head and I wonder just why, for my doubts and fears have me concerned. But I think of my grandma, for I with the spark, when she said to me decades ago, there's always a light, even in the pure dark, if we know where to look for the glow. So I started to search for a light and its shine, and it didn't take too long to see that one joy this year, which soon came to mind, a true story of a small special tree. I know where to plant it, his options he weighed, as my friend bought that tree with delight. There's just enough sunshine and plenty of shade so the sapling can grow day and night. The tree was a beauty and very unique, a cypress, they call it Pinocchio. Its branches were different and really quite sleek, yet the color was gray, green, and smoky. I've never seen anything like it for sure, though different, it sure was amazing. While not very big, in fact quite demure, it would grow, yet worthy of very high praising. We planted the tree in view of the street, where all who passed by could admire. With few other plants for it to compete, it would grow and be sure to inspire. My friend loved that tree, and clearly it showed. He'd treat it with love and great care. Upon it, his time and affection bestowed, his feelings for it were laid bare. Throughout all the spring, and hot summer too, the tree did the best that it could. With water supplied, the thing slowly grew, just the way we all hoped that it would. But early this fall, my friend seemed quite down. He said, something's wrong with the tree. The branches had started to dry and turn brown, not something he wanted to see. He did all he could to save the tree's life, but it was not meant to be so. For reasons unknown, it succumbed to its strife. It was never again going to grow. The life of that tree was remarkably short. It died in the youth of existence. But the purpose it served, I'm glad to report, was worth all of my best friend's persistence. Now all was not gone when the little tree died, though the loss was not easy to take. Throughout its short life, it struggled and tried, and its impact was not a mistake. The tree's life had ended before it began, but it still had a purpose to fill. One thing that it had was the love of one man who would make sure its impact was real. Now Christmas was coming, as everyone knows, which makes for short days and long nights. But that dead little tree, in brightness it glows, for it's covered in holiday lights. My friend took his time to carefully string each light on the tree's fragile form. And the beauty it has and the joy it does bring makes my heart swell with joy and feel warm. Although that small tree is no longer living, it can still bring joy to mankind. Its life had real meaning, it's in death it's still giving. Its memory won't be left behind. Just like our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, who lived and then died with great glory, that small little tree with spirit and feist has a wonderfully similar story. Each one started life in a most humble way, and to serve men they both came to be. Our Lord and the tree would never betray why God sent them to bless you and me. Each of their lives had ended too early. Their presence on earth has been missed. 
But they are still with us. I know this most surely. Their influence cannot be dismissed. While death is a part of each life, we all know, and dying itself is essential, God placed us all on the earth here to grow and to work hard to reach our potential. And just like the Lord, that tree had to die so it could complete its life story. That same can be said for us all, you and I, that's required to achieve our full glory. I pray we'll consider my grandma's remark that she told me those decades ago. There's always a light, even in the pure dark, if we know where to look for the glow. So when we all celebrate Christmas this year, I hope we'll remember and see that Christ had to die, but he'll always be near, and so will Dave's small cypress tree. No one to care for her plight. 
The salesman knelt on the floor with her, gathered the apples, put them in the baskets, and helped set the display up once more. As he did this, he noticed that many of them had become battered and bruised. These he set aside in another basket. When he had finished, he pulled out his wallet and said to the girl, Here, please take the 20 from the damage we did. Are you okay? She nodded through her tears. She continued on with, with on. I hope he continued on. I hope we didn't spoil your day too much. She, as the salesman started to walk away, the bewildered girl, blind girl called out to him, Mister, he paused and turned to look back into those blind eyes. She continued, are you Jesus? Do people mistake you for Jesus? This is our, this is our destiny. Too much to be so much like Jesus that people cannot tell the difference as we live and interact with a world that seems increasingly blind to his love, life, and grace. To know the Savior, we must become like the Savior. I hope that we will all continue to be like Jesus and enlighten everyone you meet in your journey of life. With the light of your love and kindness, as Midrith stated, Ramdas said it best. He said, we are all just walking each other home. I hope that you will always remember to bring the light home. I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
your homes this evening. I hope that you have your candles ready because there's only one thing left to do. Light our candles as we sing silence. Just two verses. Unless we get inspired and we'll just sing until we're finished. Get your candles ready. The choir's ready. Maestro, are you ready? Hmm. 